Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Really excited today. So I've got a kayak that a lot of you have been asking me questions about, been emailing me about, and what I've got here, I've got the Old Town Big Water 132. Um, I took it out on the water. We're going to give an overview of this, kind of show you from bow to stern the features and benefits of this kayak. Stay tuned to the end and we'll go over the pros and cons and maybe some different kayaks that you should be looking at within that same price point and then to see, you know, just to make sure that this is the right kayak for you. Who is this meant for? So this kayak is really meant for big open water, as the name would suggest, lake fishing, uh, lake recreational paddling as well, exploring. Who is it not meant for? So this is not meant for or may not shine as brightly in the uh, creeks, rivers, really narrow passageways, and also maybe someone that has some limited transport options. I'm talking about car topping, limited space. Again, it is a long kayak and a heavy kayak, so keep that in mind as well. But we'll get right into it. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick overview. I'm going to go from bow to stern, and I'm going to get this thing out on the water, kind of go over some of the features and benefits. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to give a summary, give some pros and cons, and maybe suggest some different kayaks to look at in the same value and price point if you haven't already pulled the trigger on this. So we'll get right into it. Okay, so here's the Old Town Big Water 132. Uh, I'll put the specs up here on the screen for you to look at. Again, this is a 2023 model, so the specs and the MSRP are 2023. So starting at the front here, you do have the molded in handle, which I'm a big, big fan of on any kayak. Um, not to say that certain kayaks don't benefit from a soft carry handle, but when you're talking about a 13 foot long kayak, a heavier kayak like this, you do, uh, it does benefit you a great deal to do this. It also gives you some different uh, grip points there. Moving up here, uh, you've got these little uh, paddle stagers or rod tip protectors. It's just a little flap here that can protect, uh, you know, it kind of helps hold that paddle in or helps guide that rod tip uh, and keep it from going outside the boat. They do have uh, the removable hatch that is held in place by these bungees. They used to have the little twist lock system there that a lot of people like, but they have gone to this bungee system instead now. It is tethered by this cord. The tethering is really nice because that allows you to do, you know, if you got some items stored in a small dry box, it allows you to tether them with a carabiner clip to that cord so it's not running all inside uh, the hole. Think of a dry box for like your phone, keys, and wallet. These do come with uh, stand-up assist straps. You've got the little bar here. These are really good, obviously, for helping you stand up, but more importantly, to sit back down. So sitting back down, it uh, keeps you from plopping down on the seat really hard, maybe losing that stability. You do have a really nice uh, storage here. Uh, this pod, it opens up from both ends. This one's really good if you're running any kind of fish finder. You do have a transducer mount scupper underneath it that protects your transducers from any debris, uh, any ground if you're going up on the shore. And you've got two gear track here on the edges. So again, think of that for mounting your displays. Even if it's a larger one, you have two, uh, two legs to kind of mount that base to. And up here, additional small storage. This is great for a phone um, if you're... If you're tournament fishing, it, it gives you a good spot to put your phone to take that picture of the fish, put it up on the catch board, and then release, of course. Uh, you got track padding along the, the deck here on the sides. That's good for stand-up fishing. Um, I do really enjoy the, uh, the foot pegs here. So it's got the handle on the front. You just lift up, and it allows you to move those forward and backward and lock in place really nicely. So they definitely did a good job on that. And then these right here. So these, think of these as your gear track. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty thick plate. Uh, that's really nice if you're wanting to troll along the side. This will handle uh, a little bit of a heavier duty mount. Uh, and then any Yak Attack accessory will fit on these rails. So on the Big Water 132, you've got two on each side. You've got the little groove here if you want to set your paddle across it and start fishing. The seat is really comfortable. Um, again, stay tuned in the video. I'll show you my on-the-water stuff here. But I really did enjoy the seat. 
Again, I'm 6'5", I'm about 260, 265. Uh, I enjoyed the seat. It wasn't too narrow for me. It allowed me to kind of move around a little bit on the seat. It is adjustable high and low. Um, it, does, it does come up to here on the high position. And then the rear has kind of this little locking uh, track system here where you can move it around. I would like to see maybe a little bit more trim options moving it forward and backward than it is, but that's that's what you get. Uh, you do have a nice flush mount rod holder here on the side, so if you landed a fish, you can put your pole in there. Uh, you can rig up your bait, fix your plastic back on the hook, or help get that fish off uh, off the hook without having to hold your rod out to the side, so I really like to see that. Got your paddle stagers or your rod holders, again, if you wanted to store them horizontally. Here in the back, again, two flush mount rod holders. You got additional uh, kind of these heavy duty mounting plates here for any kind of T-bolt accessories. Nice, nice uh, large tank well back here. And then you can see here, you can do a round, like a day hatch kit uh, if you choose to. That would be really nice to have if you are doing this uh, on the rudder. So this is rudder ready. So I was wanting to show you the kit here uh, or, or where it would go, obviously, you got the four bolts here where your rudder would go. This does come uh, from the factory. You can see there it's got the tubing already set in there. And then on the front, you can see where it comes out on both sides there. So you can use it, utilize a foot steering system with the rudder there. But uh, honestly, really solid kayak. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show you my on the water footage now. We'll get this thing out um, and then stay tuned to the end again. I'll give my final thoughts, maybe some pros and cons. And then I'll, you know, again, uh, as I said before in the intro, I'll kind of go over some different kayaks that are around that same price point that may, uh, that may need some consideration. But uh, we'll get this thing out on the water and stay tuned. Speed, really nice, and the comfort on this boat is phenomenal. So I kind of expected that. Um, I know I'm kind of splitting hairs here, but you know, it does have a high-low option, but you are in that, that one position. But handling, maneuverability, speed, um, I'm really pleased. Can't say I'm surprised, so I'm never, I've never once said that Old Town doesn't make a quality kayak. They do. Um, I'm just I'm a little bit more impressed with their higher end stuff than I am their lower end or mid mid range kayaks. They could make a pretty decent pedal drive option. Um, I'm not I'm not sold on it being the greatest in the industry. Um, good warranty. They're U.S. made. They're roto molded, which is you know uh, that's that's almost a requirement for me personally. And then a much better quality control process than you get with your foreign made kayaks. So again, just out of the box, I love the speed. I love the maneuverability of it. Um, it does paddle like you would expect a 13 foot kayak to. It tracks relatively well. It, uh, the speed is really nice. Stability, so it's got, yeah, it's got a really good secondary stability. Not quite maxed out, which is what I like personally. So you've got a bit of a loose primary. So again, your primary is that, that initial wiggle like you see here so it doesn't feel like it's just a flat piece of plastic sitting on the on the water there so it allows you to kind of maneuver it and Chad does a really uh, Chad Hoover does a really good video on kayak stability he just put out recently I'll link that down below in the description I think that's something that every potential kayaker or even seasoned kayaker should be uh, informed on because it does uh, it tells you a little bit more due to your wants and needs, what you should be looking for with stability, because most of us big fishermen, we just want stability, but there is a little bit of a difference between primary and secondary, and even if you know what that means, what does it mean to how your kayak, individual kayak maneuvers, but anyway. 
again, really good. Um, again, I'm not the I'm not the best on stability because I am I am kind of tall. I am a bit bit on the top heavy side. The one thing I will say, you will want you bigger guys are going to want a little bit of a stand up assist strap, not for standing up, but for sitting back down. Because I've got the seat in the low position, which is typically where you want to be at when you're paddling something like this. You're going to be fine in the higher position, but again, you're going to get a better center of gravity. You're going to get a better paddle stroke there. Uh, just keep that in mind, especially if you're a novice. If you're intermediate to advanced paddler, high and low is not going to matter to you. I do like the fact that you have the tabs in the front of the pedals, so you don't necessarily have to be uh, leaning up again, you know, on the front of the boat to reach that. That's really nice. The storage on the inside, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, you can't convert this to a pedal drive kayak. So again, on this kayak, you're either going to go one or the other. It's not something you can build incrementally, which to me, a fishing kayak, my top end fishing kayaks, that's what I prefer. I prefer something that you can maybe add a pedal drive to, but more importantly, maybe add a motorized option to. Let's have a spot there for a rudder also. Um, I'll let you be the judge of if it needs a rudder. Honestly, this boat handles good enough. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't see a need for a rudder unless you're doing some drifting down some moving water, say like a really wide river. Uh, we have the White River here locally that always flows and I always describe it as like a big freeway. So what that would allow you to do is if you're fishing, you can fish and then you can just turn your rudder to kind of control your drift a little bit. So I do, I do see the value in that. Again, is it a perfect kayak? No, not at all. But honestly, none of them were perfect. There's always going to be a little bit of a give and take there. One thing uh, I wanted to go over also is how the hull is designed. So this is the bottom of the boat. You can see you've got a really nice keel line. Uh, you got this little flat surface here, which it'll keep it from dipping too much into the water, obviously, because once it hits this, you'll get a little bit more of that resistance. But you can see where that secondary stability comes into play there. And then also the tracking. So it's it's not quite that true tri-hull design like we talk about, but you can see where you get your stability from. It does track relatively nice, but it's not, you can go too hard in my opinion on the keel line. Uh, but again, you can see you've got a couple of lines here that helps with that secondary stability that I, uh, that kind of demonstrated out on the water. You can see here too, you've got your transducer mount right here. That's not going to accommodate your longer side scan uh, transducers, nor does it need to, but uh, just keep that in mind there. And then of course, as always, you got your drain plug here on the side, and then you've also got that sacrificial uh, skid plate here on the rear end. But just kind of give you guys a good look of what that looks like. It reminds me a lot of the Jackson U-Pick uh, in the way that it's designed on the bottom. And that probably is accounting for a lot of the performance that I saw on the water there. Okay, guys. So if you're this far in the video and you're still here, I really appreciate it. So I'm going to get my summary here and talk about some pros and cons and also some maybe some different value options, different kayaks on the market that are around that same price point that might suit things a little better for you. But if this checks all the boxes for you, it's definitely a great option. But there are some other options out there you may need to consider. And I'll go over that here in a little bit. But so as far as pros and cons, the first pro I'm going to say it's going to be the paddling speed. It handled really well. It's got a, a, a nice speed to it, so it's not a real wide, heavy, flat kayak. It's a little bit of that slender, so it tracks really well. The straight line speed is really nice if you want to cover a lot of ground on lakes. Um, so, and number two, that brings me to the second one is the secondary stability is really, really good on this. So once you lean over a certain amount, you're going to feel that cradle kind of catch you. Uh, that's really good if you're standing up and fishing from it. It's really good if you're leaning over to turn it. And also if you're landing a fish, leaning over and reaching down to that fish, that secondary stability is really going to help you on that. Uh, third one, third pro is the seat. I loved the seat. Now, seats are always going to be a personal preference. Uh, ten people can look at this kayak. Five people are going to love this seat. Five people may like a different option a little better, so keep that in mind. 
sturdy mounts. It's got these heavy duty plates in it. I didn't think I was going to like that at first, but I actually kind of preferred it after a while. It gives, it's like having a gear track installed on it, but it's really thick. It's really sturdy. Uh, if you're trolling along the side, it's going to allow you to do that. You get a heavy fish on, you're not going to get a lot of flex on there. You can also drill into those plates and it gives you a customizable uh, feature though. You can always uh, interchange those out. You can remove it and install a new one if you've drilled into it. It's very similar to the Pro Angler mounting plate on the front of the H-Rail where you can kind of you know drill stuff into as well. Now I'll get to the cons. So the cons, number one, it's a little pricey. At $1,849, you're looking at the top end of the kayak industry, and we all know there's a lot of quality kayaks out there from a lot of different manufacturers. And in that price point, I feel like there's some maybe some different options out there that I'll give you here in a minute. But just know that if you're in that price point already, you've got some options there. So don't be afraid to look around a little bit. Number two on the seat, the seat's really comfortable, but I would like to see some more trimming options. Maybe a little bit more movement forward and backward. There's definitely enough boat to do that, but moving that seat forward and backward a little bit more allows you to trim your weight on the kayak. If you're loaded up in the front or the back, or if you got a motor, if you, you've motorized this thing, um, it's going to affect that, uh, the weight where you got it at. So just know that uh, it is a high-low seat, but again, you're just moving just that little bit on there. So number three, for the, the, for the kayak that we're looking at here in the big water, it's 13 foot long. It's got a really low weight capacity. So Old Town, they're, at least they're honest about their usable weight capacity of 339 pounds. For a kayak that size, that's really kind of on the low end. Um, you know, when I think of good weight capacities, I'm thinking of Jackson. I'm thinking of, you know, things like that. And even at a lower price point, you get, even out of the Jackson Bite, you get a 400-pound usable weight capacity on that. So keep that in mind as well. If you carry a lot of gear with you, you're going to want to consider that. Um, even if you get within 50 to 75 pounds of that capacity, you are going to start to see some performance changes there. Uh, me at 260 pounds, if I'm carrying a lot of heavy gear with me, if you want to do an overnight trip or something, you're going to need to take that into consideration there. Now, okay, so different options. Uh, you're in that $1,800 to $2,000 price point. What are some other options in that price point that may do just as well or some things a little bit better? First and foremost, I'm going to go over is the Jackson U-Pick. So the Jackson U-Pick is a 12-foot, 2-inch kayak, but you get a wide open space. You get deck padding throughout. You get a high-low seat that trims the length of the kayak. And a price point of $1,669, it's a phenomenal option and a, and a maybe a little better value depending on what you're using it for. You have a lot more storage on there on top. Uh, you don't have the in-hatch storage on the U-Pick. It is motor ready, so you do have the uh, the Torquedo ready motor mounts on the back of it. And then some people have even mounted trolley motors to the bow of it, even though it's an aftermarket accessory there. Uh, number two I'm going to go over is the New Canoe Unlimited. So the uh, many of you know, and I'll put a link to the video up here, the New Canoe Unlimited, in my opinion, is one of the best values on the market for kayak fishing. At $17.99, it comes in at $50 less than the Big Water. It's 12 foot 6 inches long, but you get a trimmable seat, the length of the kayak. It's a it's the old Millennium Style 360 swivel seat option. You've got deck padding throughout. You have options to have a, uh, a, a hatch pod on the front of it. You can do the bow mount trolling motor. It's got a flat transom. So the flat transom gives you some lower price points of trolling motors that you can attach to it. So you don't have to be too crazy with it. And you can also add New Canoe's pivot drive system for pedal drive. So it's a boat you can build incrementally at a lower price point. Uh, so also along the same range too, the Bonafide SS-127, which again, Really, really comfortable seat. I would say the SS series seat is a, a slightly more comfortable than the uh, the Old Town seat is for most people, not everybody. Uh, it is high-low. You get a little bit of a trimmable option there, but not as much as, say, the Unlimited is. Again, the SS series from Bonafide, you get the bow mount option. You get the rear mount option as well, large tank well, and adjustable foot pegs, the whole nine. You get everything on the Bonafide that you do on the Big Water. 
the big water may paddle a little bit faster than that, but you have a lot more options for customization on the new canoe, the Bonafide, and even the Jackson U pick. So that's my that's my run through of the Old Town Big Water 132. Uh, if you have this kayak, let us know down in the comments what you think about it. And if you're looking at this kayak, look at some of those other options. And if this is still the kayak you feels for you, pull the trigger on it. You're not going to be disappointed with really any of those options. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.